Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Thursday, January 30th, 2014. In New Jersey, in the Princeton area today, driving to work, the temperature was one degree Fahrenheit. We're about 35 miles away from where the Super Bowl is going to be played on Sunday. Fortunately for the National Football League, weather forecasts are now indicating that the temperature at kickoff at about 6.30 p.m. Sunday night will be in the high 30 degrees with only overcast cloud cover. It will not be snowing. A huge sigh of relief is being emitted through the National Football League, which did face the possibility of event postponement. Meanwhile, one place that is uh, having a bit of a problem with weather remains the city of Atlanta. The biggest city in the American South was crippled uh, yesterday by a mere 2.6 inches of snow. The situation was so bad that as we reported yesterday, some 9,000 students had to remain overnight in schools. The National Guard was sent in, the Georgia State Police was sent in. As of this morning, there remained 3,000 cars which had been abandoned on highways leading into and out of Atlanta. Even last night, some 2,000 students had to stay overnight at schools as well because they couldn't get home from the day before. Schools, of course, have been canceled now, and the cleanup is continuing. More bad weather is predicted for the area as we speak. Meanwhile, the American economy grew at 3.2% in the final quarter of 2013. Apparently, it shrugged off the uh, government shutdown in the fall. Um, it was a little bit of a drop from 4.1%, uh, which is the rate it grew at in the third quarter. So meanwhile, the overall rate for 2013 was an economic growth rate of 1.9%. That's down about 2.8% from 2012 and remains in line with expectations. Meanwhile, the big Lloyds insurer Hiscox could return up to $165 million of capital to shareholders when it announces full-year results next month. This is according to an analyst at Peel Hunt. The analyst notes that uh, Hiscox's strong full-year results are helped by the fact of low catastrophe claims. They also note that Hiscox made a 150 million pound distribution back to shareholders in April, or 250 million U.S., so that if they add in the uh, 165 million they're expected to return next month, that means that uh, in less than 12 months, Hiscox will have paid back $415 million U.S. to shareholders. That's pretty good. Well, somebody needs to know from the teacher, the embattled president of the Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych, is taking sick leave. He apparently is suffering from acute respiratory distress and high fever. He is uh, officially taking a leave of absence due to illness as the country's president. There's no indication how long he might be on leave or whether, in fact, he's going to be able to work from home. Of course, he's under pressure after two months of major protests seeking his resignation. Earlier this week, he cajoled his prime minister to resign, but that wasn't enough for the uh, protesters. Meanwhile, in France, about 20% of flights into and out of the uh, two big Paris airports, Orly and Charles de Gaulle, have been canceled because French air traffic controllers are on strike. They're uh, complaining about plans to combine European airspace. The French Civil Aviation Authority is uh, upset uh, because of European Union plans to streamline air traffic controls, very similar to the way the land routes are now streamlined, where you can go from one country to another without passing through customs. The French air traffic controllers believe that such a plan will mean job losses. So, presumably it's better to keep a system where there are 27 or so different countries with 27 or so different air traffic jurisdictions passing off uh, planes one after the other in a very small area. Interesting. The U.S. intermediary Arthur J. Gallagher, based out in Taskin, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, has said they will not, not invest large sums of money in Grand Chilton's Capsicum Reef, a new reinsurance broker that had just helped set up in London. Chilton, of course, was one of the founders of Benfield and uh, engineered the sale of Benfield to Aon in 2008 for some $800 million. According to uh, Pat Gallagher, uh, the CEO of uh, A.J. Gallagher, he said, we think we've got an opportunity to build something with Graham Chilton. We're very excited about it, but it's not going to be something that we're spending millions and millions of dollars on to find out if we can do it. Uh, back in 2008, 
five, Gallagher sold its AJG Re to Aon for some $40 million. We've been talking uh, to some people in England, and they keep asking us why we're not mentioning the floods in England. And we were really unaware of them until we uh, looked on Google. And in fact, southwestern England has been inundated by floods. The area down uh, around Somerset has uh, really been isolated for the past several weeks because of heavy flooding from backed up rivers and canals. This morning, the British military deployed the army down there, which has gone in with Humvees and pontoon boats in order to bring people out of the trap. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, there does not seem to be anybody who's been drowned or killed. However, it's obviously a gigantic inconvenience. Well, here's an interesting story. Uh, a Guinness Book of World Record for the, pace, for the place with the most lightning has apparently been awarded to an area in Venezuela that recorded, listen to this, 3,600 lightning bolts in an hour. The certificate was handed out uh, yesterday by the Guinness Book of World Records. It apparently occurred in the northwestern state of Zulia in Venezuela, uh, up by the southern end of Lake Maracaibo. The number of lightning bolts are remarkable, an estimated 18 to 60 a minute. Uh, with each flash packing enough energy to light up 100 million light bulbs. That really is amazing to see that when we're watching that. And uh, once again, indicating that in all countries, the uh, job of vice president of the country is a little bit ceremonial. For Venezuela, Vice President Jorge Areza was the recipient of the certificate from the Guinness Book of World Records, awarding his country the record for the most lightning strikes. That's the news for today. If there's any great news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.